from Richmond, Virginia, and I'm an anarchist. And today I'm here with my good friend, Tyler. What's up, man? <laughs> I didn't Sorry from the me. last video. <laughs> first day of school. That's right. Yeah, technically today's the first day of school. That's right. You happy awesome. to be back? I'm so psyched. Yeah, yeah. I love the institution until it doesn't exist. Yeah. <laughs> and, and funny enough, PC already has the uh, the golden black colors for those who are anarcho capitalists So ready for appropriation. Um, yeah, I guess you're ready to uh, spread the message of freedom? Definitely, man. All right, let's do this. All right. And I never, I never actually got to meet him. He, I was born in 89, he died in 85. He told my grandmother before he died that he lived to see the rise and fall of the unions. He saw them serve a good cause, and then towards the end they just wanted too much, they wanted too much power. And that's where their downfall came. I mean, that, that's part of the reason why we don't have a manufacturing base in this country anymore. Right. People were driven out, businesses were driven out because of those unions. I mean, also, the benefit of paying less in taxes, I mean, sure, that certainly helped them to leave, but I mean, unions played a driving factor in that as well. Yeah. I mean, that's why you see more businesses coming to right-to-work states, and you see right-to-work states economically improving while states enforce unionism and excessive social programs failing and people fleeing from them. I mean, if it was the other way around, if government, excessive government regulation, I'm going to leave it that. Excessive government regulation force unionism work. People would be fleeing into California and not fleeing into Texas from California. So that's yeah. that's my economic argument of the day. Some places in California already fought for bankruptcy. Oh, yeah. Vallejo, California, that was one of the first cities in America to file for bankruptcy. They were paying their police officers $100,000 a year. Right. And they just couldn't keep it up. I mean, they couldn't pay the public employees. And it drove business away. It drove productive people away. People aren't going to want to start a business where you're going to have to be paying extra taxes like that, for excessive taxes. Why start it there when you can go somewhere else yeah. where your burden is going to be less and you can create more jobs and expand your business? No. Yeah. And I guess uh, a lot of the contribution into that is that because they have a monopoly on that security service, and anytime you have a monopoly on anything, the, the price of that always goes up and the quality oh, yeah. goes down. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, well, most monopolies are sanctioned by the state themselves. I mean, right. it's really actually very hard to have a true monopoly unless there's some kind of regulation put in place. And I mean, that's that's what regulatory policy sadly leads to. And I mean, I'm not disparaging all regulation. Some some make sense, but I mean, in a really very limited Can name one? sense. Does that make sense? I mean, one of the prime ones, and this is a very vague and abstract thing, I think there need to be laws that protect contracts. Okay. That people make with one another. Right. Or else you're just going to have people screwing each other over. All right, so what would end up happening in a free and voluntary society when you don't have a state uh, a monopoly on law and on courts and on judges? Uh, you have private dispute resolutions, right? So yeah. a lot of this stuff will enforce the contracts. And even if there was none of that, you know, the thing is, once everyone's aware that you're not keeping your end of the bargain of the contract, no one will want to do contract business is with you because if they, your, your reputation is fallen. And that's why people brand the products, you know, their word and their the product is on the line. Yeah. You know, uh, so I, I, I mean, the, so like, without the monopoly in law, you can have a polycentric legal system. Right? You can have, uh, you can still have those rules without the rules, but you can at least have a way where, like on eBay, people have these verbal, I mean, this uh, internet contract, this is a product I'm going to sell you, but they'll rate you down if you provide a bad service. And you're kind of socially ostracized from having access to those voluntary interactions. I mean, yeah, that makes sense, but I mean, again, that's, and I'm not putting that idea down. I just, I don't see it as practical now, and that's why I'm not on the go about it. I don't see it as practical. I mean, it's basically all hypothetical. So I'm just going with what we know works. This, this works. On eBay, it works on eBay. There's no government there. There's no criminal justice system there. They have a really great private dispute resolution organization. And so it's real much your word, and then uh, the way you do business, what, what keeps the rating up. You know, that you seem trustworthy. You, you've never uh, skipped out on any of your contracts in the past two years. You seem like a more credible person. I would want to do business than Joe Smo, who, you know, he has a history of breaking contracts, you know, sorry, you know, I don't think you can keep your word, right? So people who kind of break those contracts naturally then socially ostracize themselves from the engagement of a, of a market. I'm not going to dispute that point. Okay. I mean, I'm going to have to look more into it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You said you were interested in one example, yeah. so. You said you've heard of uh, Austrian economics, is that? Yeah. Yeah? All right, cool. Yeah, I'm, I'm still learning a lot about this sort of stuff myself in there, and uh, you'll find a lot of this if you're first for studying there. I don't know, I guess uh, maybe I'll send you something on this particular issue, because I think that's, it kind of naturally works, you know, your reputation is totally as good as your work, you know? Yeah. So. Well, anyways, I've got a class yeah, 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 yeah. too, and I'm going to have to run home and then be back here, but... <laughs> 
I'll probably see you again. Absolutely. Since you're always absolutely. here. <laughs> Anyways, you have a good afternoon. You too, man. Take good care. Versus the uh, plurality of non-binary solutions that you and I already share. Yeah. What, what do you think of that? Yeah, yeah. 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 And, and the thing is, the, the services that they force on us, they force on us to have to pay for it, have to realize that they have a monopoly on the services. They have a monopoly on law, on judges, on courts, on security, on roads, on schools. They can't cancel, opt out, you know, like Netflix, try to raise the prices and people, oh, forget that, cancel, subscribe, go to Hulu, right? But you can't do that even if the services they force on you are harmful and abusive. You can't even have the freedom to provide a better service and compete a better quality, right? So anytime you have a monopoly in anything, the quality, the, the price of it always goes up and the quality always goes down, right? Whereas if you have a freedom of competition to provide these services, uh, the cost of these always goes down and the quality always goes up, right? Like I may not be able to afford an iPhone 5, but I could get an iPhone 2, right? Uh, so that, that, that's to me, I mean, they have a, mon they have a binding monopoly on, on these services and that's, that's where I'm here trying to talk about. You know, let's turn to our community and find the voluntary non-violent uh, solutions that everybody applies in our lives and turn away from government telling us how to solve problems with their black lives. Alright, cool. Uh, Alright, well, the, the, the philosophy, I'm going to wrap it up. The philosophy is called anarchy. By definition, it means uh, without political rulers. We can have rulers. We just don't need strangers, political rulers, arbitrarily dictating how left, best our lives should be lived. Uh, yeah, alright, let me give you a... Uh, oh. Alright man, take good care. Hey! Alright, so first question. In your day-to-day -day lives, do you use violence to solve your personal problems? No? No? Alright. Alright, and the second question would be, with the exception of self-defense, would you consider it wrong and immoral to, violent, to, to initiate that violence? Uh, with the exception of self-defense, would it be wrong to initiate? Depends, I mean, self-defense is a pretty broad category. Well, self-defense of yourself and others, self-preservation of, uh, because property rights begins with self-ownership, so uh, responsible for, for your own actions and your own, um, I guess, the cause of those actions. Like, like the, from the initiation, well, the from the initiation of violence. All right, so defining violence as placing a person in an involuntary position without their consent or choice, i.e. rape, murder, theft, and assault. So your self-defense is a rejection of that force. It's self-preservation from the... I'd be willing to use violence more than that. Give me, give me a definition. I mean, it's good to define the terms before we begin, so please uh, define I mean, just violence. in general, how people will act, in, act in society and use resources is in and of itself. How so? I mean, if you have somebody polluting groundwater, if you have somebody... If you, so you give someone gr groundwater? Polluting groundwater. Polluting, okay. It would seem to make sense to be able to stop it. Yeah, yeah, because then, uh, like for example, if you have a property next to a stream, it's polluting uh, your, your property of that water, of that access of the clean water that you had before. So in a free and voluntary society, you'd have contact within one another, you'd have like an insurance policy against pollution, there'd be no such thing as corporations. There's just pieces of paper that back and enforced by the government. So without government, there's no corporations. So it goes back to the way we would be liable for our own actions, right? So in a free and voluntary society, uh, you would have uh, property rights protected by insurances. Like, I want uh, pollution uh, free water. Property rights depend on violence. No, it doesn't. Uh, 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 you're not even defining violence. You're just throwing this you're, vague question no, out there. Please define violence. Define your term. What is violence? Punching someone. Don't just punching someone? Yeah. Our right, boxing is consensual. Boxing has rules, nothing below the waist. No, no uh, ear body Mike Tyson, and then we can box. It's but consensual. It's no, it's an outlet of aggression. But property rights depend on violence. Property rights, property rights begins with self ownership. How am I committing violence against myself by owning my body? Property in the terms of like owning land or owning a building or owning. I'm sorry. I'm any sorry. any form of resource is owning property, and that depends on violence. Has like well, how, what, what, what are you Give me an example of how this violence committed onto uh, an intangible item, an inanimate object. No, the act of being able to own it depends on violence, or the ability to inflict violence on somebody that wants to take it from you. So, wait, well, I'm trying to understand. So you own this shirt, who did you commit violence to? I don't commit violence to procure it in, inherently, but I commit violence to retain my property ownership of it. That's right, right, right. I'm, I'm actually inherently against private property ownership. You're against self-ownership then? I'm you have to, because all property rights derive from self-ownership of myself. I own my words, the fact that you use... Uh, right, no, I'm against, yeah, sure, I'm against that. I'm, I feel like people need to be, to a large degree, subservient to the community they live in. And they shouldn't push their rights above that of the, of the greater good. Right, but the greater good is, for, 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 for,
for the majority is also the greatest evil on the minority. So you have a no. preference that you're forcing it to everyone, so you would force your ideas well, on That's how them. any society works. But under government. And that's the point I'm trying to go at the end of this. Just give me, if you give me a point, give me a minute to describe this. And let's talk after that and see what your thoughts are, okay? Mm -hmm. I'm not advocating, I guess, mostly onto like corporations or anything. It's actually something different, perhaps maybe you're not heard of. Okay? All right, so can I start again from the beginning? Sure. All right. In your day-to-day -day life, do you do you use violence to solve your personal problems? Like, do you rape, do you murder, do you steal, and do you assault? No, but I. Okay. But my personal life is built on those that do. Right, but but you as the individual, you as yourself, right? Forget everyone else right now, right? You can't show me your friends or family or Americans without showing me individual people because only individual people exist. So you right now here on in this nice August day, uh, you don't use violence. You just said. All right. No, but I'm depending on violence. You're it's depending on other people, right? Right. Government uses violence to solve these problems. So in a way, we're kind of. But just because a slave accepts a meal from their slave master doesn't mean that they can. Don't violence doesn't mean they, they couldn't go in slavery. Okay, you're forcing these no, positions. Subjugated person. Right, so you're subjugated. Yeah, you're forced. Somebody that's willingly engaging and profiting from a system, and we're living such a great life in this country largely because of the violence inflicted on both the poor in this country. Exactly. And then yeah, yeah. The third exactly. World. Yes, yes. And that's the point I'm going to be making. All right. So let, let's get there. Let's get there. All right. So the second question would be with the exception of self-defense. Right. Would you consider wrong and immoral to initiate that violence? Then? No. With the exception of self-defense. I mean, that's pretty much what you're talking about, right? You can use force if other people initiate that force against you. Right, but I think it's just to, to initiate an interaction to bring about a positive change in society. So you will rape someone to prevent rape? You will murder someone to prevent murder? Okay, see... So please explain to me, because violence is, uh, your, your, is a violation of personal property rights. So I'm trying to understand I don't believe where you don't understand that. You don't believe in self-ownership? You don't believe, you don't believe that I own my vest? I believe that you retain property of it because you can call on that police officer that just walked by if I try to take it. They have a monopoly of security forces. I don't have a, I don't have a, I don't have no freedom to, to unsubscribe or cancel my payment or provide a better service. Right. Right. Because of government. And that's the point I'm trying to make. You get rid of the idea of government, you can turn to our community and have communities of preferences. You can have a community that doesn't believe in property rights. That's perfectly fine. You can have those that can, as long as it's voluntary. Right, we can have these communities. We can have an apartment complex, uh, apartment complex that's uh, 420 friendly, one across the street that's not. Right, we can live within our own shared preferences of community, and that's the point. I'm not trying to force anyone to defend those those buildings. Who's going to keep somebody that doesn't have? Right, right. Okay. So we can still, right, we can still have security. At least it'll be voluntary in the aspect of like you can provide a better security that you're not going to throw people that's in cages. I mean, that's still it's not violence. There's a guy uh, in Detroit is doing this now because the cops has become so unsustainable that uh, it takes like over an hour then for them to uh, respond to 911 calls. So this guy created a a better security. He's never hurt anyone because of this. Actually, crime has gone down because of because of this this uh, service that these neighborhoods are voluntarily paying for because this is what they want. They do. He's providing a better so security. So what does he do against? Because the thing earlier you're telling me that uh, people use violence. Actually, this guy's not using violence. He's been doing this for a few years now in Detroit. Detroit. Well, where one example doesn't. That's a great example where it yeah, can exist one in a violent monopoly on security service where you can't compete anywhere else. This one place because Detroit is bankrupt and the government has become such so unsustainable that it's collapsed. You find free market services. But one example that doesn't define a system or doesn't like create. It, it, it neither invalidates a system that, it, that so it depends on to profit itself up. Or, or here's another nor does example. It create an here's another example. example eBay, largest employer in the world. eBay employs so many people with their own businesses. You provide a bad service, you provide a bad business. It doesn't come matching the description on the item that you provide it. Uh, then your, your word means nothing and you get rated down. Naturally, you're socially ostracized from uh, having any kind of trade in that market without using violence. You know, so for example, you want to hold up your end of your contract or your word, that's fine. All the other businesses will know that you're not a person who keeps the word and they will not do business with you. So, But if you, if you back that up, I mean, if people... You can still use the system, and in the end, if I just outright take money from people and don't send them anything, right. the courts will still get involved. So how is that? Well, I mean, wait, wait, wait. Even if the courts don't get involved, the, the thing system. is, this. Here's, I'm, I'm showing you an alternative. The social ostracism is the best form against the initiation of violence. If the community is united against these principles, where are you going to go? No one's going to house you, feed you, clothe you, invite you to their homes. Your AT&T service okay, provider well, will look, pay you $150 to cancel your contract because you, you can have all the money in the world, but no one's going to interact with you. But look at even America. How do you? How do you? Okay, well, social ostracism, first of all, is just another form of violence. It's, what are you talking about? There's no initiation. What you're is confusing the threat for behind social with ostracism? ostracism? That ostracism. You, don't have, you don't have the ability to buy food, It means that you're an asshole. It means that you're a thief, you're a murderer, you're a rapist, and no one wants to interact with you. Why would they want to give you any food if you're just going to be running around raping people? So starving to death is not violence. 
starving to oh well, yeah you're starving to death yeah that's not violence sorry you were an asshole this civilization belongs to the civilized if it's hard for you to interact with other people and to trade or ask hey i'm hungry it's but still you will, you will go ahead it's not no it's removing uh, my interaction an action is still an action you are and, actively and, okay. doing something but by not i am resisting the initiation of the force i'm not meeting i you're meeting with, with action okay, let me, let me get to a really, of let me my get to a really like logistical level on this whole ostracization thing because i think it's I think it's actually, who defines who's ostracized? You We've do. got 200. No, that's the individual. People on eBay don't go out there, hey, don't trust this guy. Okay, Me, if you want to go my back interaction to your constant, with you, I think you you're not a good person. You have example of sexual assault. In various subcultures and communities throughout Richmond and throughout Virginia, you've got people that perpetrate sexual assault. They get called out by that group or that community and they move to a different community and do the same thing. Right. So unless you have essentially a worldwide, international or national database of people and to define who's ostracized so that, because I don't, I mean, how do I know? Look at this, I don't even know. I know, I know. So what do you do? So yeah, okay, yeah. who defines that, that database? That's great, so what do you Who runs it? Yeah, yeah, I think, and how I think is that this not is a corrupt? great idea. I think you have violence? a really good entrepreneurial idea to kind of create something and start that's nothing else. But it's there. still dependent on violence. And no, it's, it's still, still dependent on, like if you don't provide a good service what if your I'm website, falsely, but then you're, that's you're, fine, then all the other competing services will say, hey, don't do business with you, I provide a better one that's gonna be more generous and more honest than this liar over here, and your name is gonna be the first one on the list. Okay, so what if I work for 15 years and I build this amazing like I don't do any mistakes this amazing reputable company that runs this database keeping people the correct people ostracized and the, the, the people that didn't do wrong off the list and then I fall into financial hard times and I very very carefully start being like okay well here are these rural communities you know there's this guy you know 10 people sure. who the hell cares yeah I'm gonna take a bribe I'm gonna stick them on that list so I can make it by the next week. I have this massive social capital sure. that is built up on my reputation that I can now work off over the next 10, 20 years and yeah. ruin people's lives sure. through pure violence. Uh, yeah, right, 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 right. Dude, that's fraud. Yeah, because you, you, you no use fraud to defraud other people of the property, saying that you were genuine, but you're not. All right, so that's good. That's a great example because this is kind of what happened with but Netflix. This problem. is what happened with Netflix last year. They tried to raise the prices overnight, and people say, "Oh, forget that. Cancel, unsubscribe, go to Hulu." They lost a lot of money and a lot of profit. If you were to do such a bad business you center, you will have Netflix. competing organizations that will be waiting for you to fall, so they can say, "Do business with me." And get rid of this guy. Netflix, to Netflix is an example where it's how voluntary. Have, how do I have mediation to get off this list? Are you, what, are, are you advocating for a monopoly on justice? I'm gonna. What, what are you advocating for? Well, you don't believe in property. Let me like, give me a chance to understand where you're coming from. What what is it that you're? you're what, what what kind of ideal society? What, what what kind of community would you like to live in? Um, I mean, I think the biggest problem right now is the fact that people with property and with capital are running the production system and are running the justice system and that's inherent in capitalism and I think to get away from that we have to change both the mode of production and then both the mode of governance and the government needs to be designed around the people and not the, not the people at the top but the people the, the mass of people. So and right now it's, it's run by design. I mean, there's a lot of inherent flaws in the current setup of the justice system, but there needs to be a justice system. There needs to be a way to hold people accountable. Right. And this whole privatizing the justice system and putting it into databases that certain companies or individuals can run is ludicrous. No like, hey, I have no, I have no community-decided way to get off of it. You don't even have one here right now. If you're a sex right, worker, you can't get up. Right. And that's the point I'm trying to say. They have a monopoly, a violent monopoly on this one service. You can't have a polycentric legal system. You can't oh. have the freedom to provide something fair and something honest and balanced. You don't have that opportunity. You don't have that freedom. Right? So that's the right, problem. But you're throwing the bay out of the bathwater. You're saying just because I can have, find flaws in the current system, that means that nothing like right, so this, it or right, nothing right. So you're ever saying that. So lines. you're saying that uh, you don't know what violence is, and that's fine. All right. So let's go back to the no, third I question. No, you don't. You obviously can't even define it because you think property rights. So what is property rights? Owning my owning my body, owning my shirt is violence. That's yeah. a very vague statement because no, you can't even no, define violence no, or no. something. No. Define it the word. Doesn't there's violence. no depend, and that's a yes, preference. No. Sorry. Give me an objective definition. That's not based on your preference. Tell me that's something that's universal that I can apply. Not just because of your silly subjectiveness. Tell me something and define it. Property rights, what keeps people with no food and no shelter from coming in your house at night is the fact that they're scared to go to jail. The fact that they're scared that either you're going to shoot them or the police are going to shoot them. That's violence. That's keeping your property safe. That's defending your you're, property right, right. What causes people to get poor? Tell me, don't talk about the effects. Tell what me the causes, cause. 
the system of production, the, the capitalist system of production, there's accumulation of wealth at the top. And people have a certain desire to set up government to maintain that wealth, to maintain a stability in the production system so they can continue to create wealth. Right, so you're talking about central planning, and that's the thing I'm against. I'm not here advocating no, for- but I'm for it. You're for government? Okay, I think but, the people, the wrong people But government only knows how to solve problems through violence, through the threat of yes. use of violence to solve any problems. So you're, especially to your okay, you're good for okay with taxation? Yes. You're still okay with stealing other people's property? This is really good. Okay, please, this is very important. Guys, this is the guy you can't trust. This is our so, so uh, secret Dexter Morgan here. This is a guy who... You know, I don't believe yeah, that you this have is inherent a very right analysis to hoard here. resources this is, no, this, I don't have, What resources? I have a shirt, I have a tie. A lot of this stuff comes from diversity thrift. What are you talking about? What, what hoarding of I resources think do I, I have? I think it's inherently immoral that there are people in Richmond living just in the West End yeah. with hundreds of millions of dollars while in the north side and other parts of the city people are starving to death and dying. That's great. That I shouldn't think, be allowed. I think it's immoral you that the government has a, a monopoly on currency and because there's a monopoly on currency it's lost over 97% of its value. Because it's lost that much value, the poor don't have an incentive to save, to save at, at all. Every dollar they hide depreciation value. They can't even opt out. They can't even have the freedom to create their own currency. And this hurts them. This devastates them. There used to be communities all over this country. They used to actually take care of each other. They were but called friendly societies. You're pretending for voluntary that there's a separation this, this between bank. government and capitalism. Without, and you're pretending that you're there's talking a separation about corporations. between... Without government, no, there's no corporations. No. Capitalism is a system of production. Capitalism is just trade. It's voluntary. No, I no, want your shirt. No. I have, I'll have a few dollars. You want a voluntary. No, That's all it is. That you're is trying to define capitalism. Capitalism is the creation of surplus value through the purchase of labor and the application of labor. So people have capital, they hire labor, and they create surplus value that they then So take. they create jobs, people who didn't have jobs, who couldn't feed themselves, so I have uh, an opportunity to help you if you help me. We sign this voluntary agreement, this voluntary it's contract. Voluntary. Yes, I would like to work for you, it's great. Here's what I'm gonna provide for you. There's, there's, there's no, no one's, there's consent there. There's See, no force this is, there. This is a funny thing. There's no place you're, for the person in an involuntary position. You have no idea what to you're talk about, man. You're using subjective no. meanings. That's violence. Please define for us again what violence is. You're pretending that violence is only me coming up and stabbing you or punching you or beating you. You're using violence on this abstract this uh, abstract word that doesn't exist, on capitalism. There's no reference to the word capitalism. You can't point to what capitalism is. Only individuals exist. Capitalism. Only objective objects exist. Capitalism. Cattle is a mode of production, and show it's me, not show trade. Me, show me, show me, show me facts and evidence of this. Show me. What does that look like? Have you ever read books about capitalism? Yes, I've read books on capitalism. What are you, a communist in here? Is that what you're, you're coming out to reveal? You will violently force your ideas onto other people. You will violently, you have no problem stealing from other people to fund your ideas. You're the thief in our community. You're the person, yeah, obviously you don't belong here. Civilization belongs to the civilized, not to the to, to the thug here masquerading as a, as a student thinking he wants to do something some good here. You're anarchist philosophy. You're the next, you're the next Hitler here who wants to go out there and steal people's flaws. All right, so this is really good revealing. This is great. I'm advocating for not for a plurality of nonviolent solutions. I'm advocating for free and voluntary associations. As, much as, as much as as you want to name call me, your it's system. It's not name calling. I'm, I'm trying system, to actually call what it is. I don't have a fascist system. application. I have no system. Of your viewpoint, I have on no everybody. system. No system. Yes, it depends. Not at all. Everybody agrees I, with I, your voluntary. You beliefs. don't have to. Moral integrity is completely optional. You don't have to have it. If your ideas are consistent with your behavior and your thoughts, but obviously it is because you have no problem using violence to solve your problems. So yeah, that's perfectly fine. You're just an immoral person. It's good that you come out. I wish all the sociopaths would come out of the closet just like you have done. I think it's very good to kind of point these out. Dude, that you're the sign of person. But if someone says, no, hey, you have no property rights to say no. You have no, you have no position to say no. You don't own yourself. I think you're kidding yourself. No, you're, you're kidding yourself. This is, a, this is a laughing clown that you're coming you're out here trying to say you don't own yourself. I own my body to the extent that I have control property over it. Property rights. It's not... I own myself. You use possessive words. I own, these are possessive nouns. It means it implies ownership. You own yourself. You own your body. As much as I can will it to do things, but that ends at the layer of my skin. I mean, everything on top of that is property whose my holding on to these bags, which are not cheap, is dependent on violence. Did it, you steal for that? It, no, but I'm, All right, I'm, man. I'm basing that people in this country, right. Every year, people in this country die for lack of resources, either through starvation, they freeze in the cold yeah. in certain cities, and the, the likelihood that they're not taking from me, which they probably should, so they can stay alive, is because there are a group of people with guns and buildings where they all go to jail, and that's all violence. And that's what's depending on me keeping hold of my property that I've accumulated. And I probably have more than I deserve. I probably have more than I need. Please, give, give, me, give me your helmet. I need some stuff, man. Then give me, give me, give me your bag. No. Please. Why? See? This is yours? 
Is this your property? Yes, and it depends. All right, so you, you just you just extended your own personal property to an extension to an anonymous system, object. But inherent, but I don't believe that that is a good way. You don't have to. to you can start living the way the life you want to live. I'm trying to say we can get to this free and volunteer society without government. Government only knows how to use money to that threat and crush. There are a small group of people like you're describing. I'm trying to let go of this. I can, I can, those I can go in the woods and live like this on somebody else's property and be trespassing. There's so much land out there that's owned, that's owned by the government. It's so much land. It's no, you just home own it because nobody owns it. There's so much vast land that's unowned because the government has a monopoly on that. Yeah, manifest they, destiny. They, right, you and oh. government, you let go of the idea. You have so much property you can homestead. You don't have to trespass on anybody. There's so I'm much stuff that you can on have. the government, and if they feel like they want to lease that land out to a timber company right, or they want to lease right, it out to oil company, right. I'm gone. I know, and that's so the thing. I can't so let's get rid of right. the system. That, right, that's the point it's I'm trying fallacy. to say. That we can end the idea of government. We can let go of government. That's where I'm trying to go. The end game is freedom. I also want to reach there too. I want to end and that's the only going to happen through violence. It can't. It doesn't have to. Get rid of the government. Just have corporations. Thank you, man. Yeah. Just, just have corporations. Corporations depend on violence. Like you all are just pretending that no, you can have this happy, go lucky life. Without a government, there's no corporations. Corporations are just a piece of paper. The protection for personal liability that you were talking about. Like the oil spills uh, and off the coast of Alaska. The CEOs didn't lose their job. Didn't lose their money. Didn't lose their house they didn't even go to prison. The people who suffer because they have the monopoly in, in this corporate world are the employees by lowering their salaries or the consumers by raising consumer prices. Right. Without a government, there's no corporation. But you understand who put the government together, right? Right, yeah. Violent people are just a repeat of the same thing all over the, the past. people that own government and that own resources. The founding tyrants put that together. They forced the constitution. Yeah, property the, owners, the people with capital. Capitalists put it together. They didn't put it, it together. Tyrants it put it together. Thugs put it together. Why do you the think founding tyrants put it together? There's a reason that it's there. They do it there because that's all they know is government. They'll just keep repeating no, it until over and over them, again. It helps them hoard their resources. Yes, for, yes that's right. Wealth. Political rulers. And that's what I'm against. We don't no. need political rulers. All wealthy people are, are, are connected to the ruling class. I know, but, but without the political seats, without the political party, they're not being a bribe. Do you think they're going to give that to you? Have you gone to I'm not advocating go? for any of that. I don't want that. Do you think they're going to give you the resources? I don't need their resources. What, to talk? That's all I'm doing. There's so no how advocate. are you going to get rid of the courts? You get rid of the courts is by getting rid of the idea. Let go of the idea that government exists. There's no objective evidence that okay, shows me that gone. government it's exists. It's not in my head anymore. All right, so all right perfect. So continue. Go, Spread this to your friends. I need a bike, and I'm going to go take it, and let's see what happens to me. Go, go, go take a bike. Yeah, there's a monopoly I'll security. Meet, I'll, I'll meet the reality right, you know, of life where there is police and jail. In reality and of life, you have a body long. monopoly. These are nothing but extortions. In reality of life, you've had a free voluntary society. You have freedom to exist. It does it's just one in Detroit where it exists. No, it doesn't. You look it up. It doesn't exist in Detroit. It does exist in Detroit. There are people Detroit. living in a city under a government. The government's collapsed. They're, they're, they've lost their, their monopoly. They've lost a lot of the force and influence. So? It's taken they're off. still living under the federal government. They're still living under a state government. They're still living under There's a vigil the right now in Detroit, yes, but there's a lot of opportunities. People are providing free and voluntary services that the government can't provide anymore, and this so? is voluntary. That's not an example of like an alternative society. Here's an example where there's no, that, none of that violence is there. Look at all this free and voluntary stuff that shows up. You're just, you're just throwing any ridiculous statements out there. I don't know what you're... No, it's not. I'm just telling you evidence. You can come back tomorrow and, and cross-check back me right now. You just Google I'm Detroit. I'm not saying they don't exist. I'm saying they I'm don't I'm saying they exist. exist. It's working. But they're not existing outside of the government system because they live in the U.S. Right. They're not enough part of it. The roads. There's just a thing as the U.S. Building, there's nothing about an arbitrary line on a piece of paper. The roads. Yes, they outsource that to businesses to build. The government doesn't build anything. They steal your money so are, and they are give it to are a political are, are your volunteers in Detroit building roads? There's volunteers in Detroit who are responding to these all are they building? Are, no way. Are they building roads? Are they paying for roads to be built? Are they paying for cotton to be planted for their shirts and their clothing? I have are friends. They, yes, they have friends who make clothes. My friend in, here in Richmond actually builds roads. These are businesses who build it. Government doesn't build anything. They steal your money and give it to the political connected corporations to do it for them. Dude, there's no way that you can convince me that these. That's fine. You're a sociopath. No. That's not a problem. You're very deep it's embedded okay. into this matrix. That's perfectly you can fine. Name call I'm you not want. name calling. I'm showing you exactly what you have this social wow. cognitive and trying to understand That's what violence is because you're trying to be subjective. It Matter. Repeat of oh, oh, what, what, what? Socialism? Communism? What, what is it that you advocate here for? Tyranny. More tyranny. You need, to it takes tyranny to get rid of tyranny. You need you need guns to take away other people's with guns who have guns because they use violence. So you want to use violence to end violence. You want to infiltrate an organization that's founded on violence and overturn it against itself. It's, it's like, like trying to infiltrate the KKK that's founded on racism and trying to turn it against itself. But what you can do, you can ostracize them. 
You can just let go of politics, let go of voting, let go of the illusion that they have a vested interest in your freedom and just turn to our community. I'm sorry, it doesn't work. That's All right, man, take good care. It's a pleasure. You're, you're escaping All right, reality. Walk, walk away. If you have no interest in having a civil discussion, <laughs> uh, hopefully one day you let go of the idea that violence has set us free. Man. I'm not the one that's using names. You're the one who have no problem using violence. That's a very distinction. Yes, at this point, it's no, no. longer civilized. You have no problem stealing from other people to fund your ideas. Yes, you're not the one who's your name calling, but I'm the one who needs to show everyone what a secret sociopath here looks like. You're There's not no showing problem me any examples where violence can I'm be not, escaped I, I, or avoided, or there isn't any violence. I just showed you many examples, but you just refused what, to understand. Detroit? Detroit, eBay, uh, right here that you choose eBay. to talk instead of using your, your fist. So it's a voluntary interaction that you prefer. Right, because I don't reason. want to go to jail. But that's fine. So you're saying the only thing that's protecting your friends and your family are, are, is this monopoly on law. If there was no government, you'd go out there and murder your friends and steal from them. Well, that's great. That's a great character that you have, a lack of morality. You only do this because out of fear of being thrown into a cage. That sucks, man. That's not... That sucks to be your friend. I'm not saying that's how I operate. And that's how you're just telling me. That's what you just admitted to me. That without a law, you'd be out there raping people. You'd be out there murdering people. Hire your kids. Hire your wife from this motherfucker here. Oh, my God. Really? I've never... You've you just admitted it. that without you go steal someone's bike. You I have admit, no integrity. I admit that there's probably a lot of people. You are the secret sociopath. That's what I'm talking. You're the thief here in plain wolf's clothing, honey among here because it's, it's because there's already a violence system what involved. What do you think keeps people that are literally starving to death from taking from people that have? Too much? Strong, man. I don't care about it. To death. Yes, we can still help them. That everybody, the fact that people ask, what about the poor, implies that we care about the poor. We could do it more efficiently, right. most effectively, without having our money stolen from the government. We could do it better in a direct way, with our own means. With the way, we, best way we know how. Don't give it off to strangers to do it for you. What, are you ever responsible? You're not an adult. You, you don't know how to handle your money, how to handle your resources. You give it to strangers to do it for you? Are you that incompetent? Have you looked back through history and seen how different societies and like even going back to this history when there was much less government regulation and we had things like sweatshops which is a very violent way to produce goods that was then pushed aside by an uprising of the workers and the capitalist class that runs those places have seen that by giving us menial wage rights menial workers rights and menial through OSHA and all those other systems, they keep a more stable society to accumulate their wealth. That's happened over time, and it would happen again. And Pretending it hasn't gone anywhere. We keep losing more and more of our freedoms. We keep getting poorer and poorer right. and poorer. Those it's tactics, those strategies. It's, it's a cycle. It's a cycle constant. you have to break. I don't want to keep repeating this, this uh, cartoon book that you want to keep going back over in like some fucking comic books. This is real life. These are people who are starving, like you mentioned. These are people who are hurting. These right. are people in cages. Right. The only way to end is you end the system. Let go of the idea. Turn to your community and help them let go and unplug. That's the only way we can get there. You have to admit that there's a certain amount of resources in the world. There's a yes. finite yeah. amount of resources. So when people have a massive accumulation of them and are willing to defend them with violence, the only way to free them and distribute them equally is going to be by taking them. Thank you. Give, give me an example. What, what, give me a resource that there's a violent hold on it. I'll show you one right now. There's a violent monopoly on distilled spirits here in Virginia. On alcohol distribution, on wholesale and retail sell by the government. So what? They have a violent monopoly on that. On a, on a, on a scarcity on, on that. They don't even allow people to moonshine or create their own beer or create their own alcohol. There's a violent monopoly can, on first class mail. You can't even trade. You, you can't, can you create, can't create a business. Beer. You can't. It's illegal. They find you the no, to a no, cage. You, well, you, need, you need the permission, the regulations, the licensing. No. You need to refine your, your, you can't sell beer. Oh, uh, you, can you can't trade. I can't trade. If I make something, I can't give it to my friend. I can't trade. You That's can what that means, man. Beer. Yeah, but right. I can't trade. I can't share it with other people. I can't interact. What do you mean, so what? That's a fine the system we're talking about. The distribution of alcohol That's is like government. a low, yeah, it's a low problem. It's a low They have a monopoly first class mail, pieces of paper, delivering the modes of communication. Good, they should. How do you think that works? I work in a very... Let me give you a concrete example. Do you know example. what happened when they did that? They Wait. prevented people from, from passing out anti-war literature. They prevented people from passing out uh, birth control literature. They prevented this uh, anti-slavery literature. That monopoly you can prevented find, the access of information to help liberate each other, but you're saying well, that's good. Okay, you can find errors in a larger system. What do you mean errors? Me, the whole thing's immoral. It's funny to the theft. Let me, let me it doesn't matter. You, errors, me, the whole thing's an error. Let me give There's you an no example. There's no one thing that's good. Let me good. give you an example. There's no examples. I There's can't none. give you like a real life There's example. There's no real life example. There's no, no real life example. Life doesn't exist. Look, it doesn't matter. It's not that we're having a civilized discussion anyways. You have no problem using violence against me. If uh, you know, if you had it your way, if there was no law, you definitely would steal my bike. 
right? You definitely heard your friends no, in your mentioned yes, that. Yes, you did. You I said, said the retention of you my said property. Because there's going to be no law, you go ahead and steal someone's bike. <laughs> no, I said you didn't have people looking at you. Me, depending on the retention of my private property, depends on everybody else knowing that there are people that are not violent. Let me give you a concrete example. I, I work in a rural area outside of Charlottesville. Okay? And people depend on the post service to get mail. There's no company that's gonna deliver a piece of paper to them for 45 cents out in the middle of nowhere. It's not gonna happen. They're not gonna have, they're not gonna come to your house six days a week to pick it up or drop what it off. What facts and evidence do you have that you know that they can cents. or won't? They're not gonna get internet what out there. What facts or evidence do you have that they won't? Why don't they have internet? What do you facts know and evidence do you have that says that they won't or can't? I work out there. You work they out there. They don't have broadband internet. Do you know why? They do, do you know why they can't deliver mail? Because they have a monopoly in first class mail. They, FedEx and UPS can only deliver in packages. They do not have access to that market. If they, they did, it would be so much cheaper because the USPS, the rise of stress have increased over, over 150%. Right? They're unsustainable. They're, they're going bankruptcy in October. There's $16 billion in debt. That's a lot more complicated than just the mail. Delivery. That is what happens. It becomes no, unsustainable. That is facts. Look you're it not, up, Google it, USPS, they're going, they're and going, debt, billions of dollars going to bankruptcy. The reason they're going bankruptcy. into bankruptcy is because Congress has forced, law, forced laws to fund their pensions way out in advance. They were already going to bankruptcy before that because they can't they can't keep up. They have to ask permission. Okay. It takes a long time for them to get those permission from Congress. Yes, they can't keep up as a regular business could because they're not a real business. Right. But going back to the place I work, people have tried to get high-speed internet. And the only way they can do it, and it's quote unquote high speed, is through a satellite provider. None of the cable companies or the phone companies had any interest in running high speed lines out to their houses because it wasn't cost effective. They didn't make a high enough profit, if any, off that work. They didn't do it. Nobody wanted to do it. So they had, most people had dial up, the company I worked for bought a satellite, put sure, it in, sure. and they had pretty shitty internet. It was pretty low, pretty low speed. Then finally, people got, an, it was just enough pressure, the county government got behind and they ran a fiber line down the main road that sure. goes through the county. That's the only way that high-speed internet's gotten out there. There's no single private company that has taken any interest in doing it. And I would tell you why. And I would tell you why. Because in the past 60 years, because of all the regulation, it's caused a lot of businesses to lose a lot of money. It's hard for them to create enough of the capital to, to, to provide these services. We are, we are 75% poorer here. because of those regulations. Regulations are here for a reason. You are 75% poorer because of those regulations. I businesses not, cannot hire a lot more people and expand and create a lot more services I because of these regulations. I feel very with my level of wealth. There we go, man. And you're this, this capitalist you were telling me Regular, earlier that you hate. Have you, have you, have you been overseas? The, the yes, I've been overseas. The countries that don't yes. have environmental regulations? I've, I've been overseas, yes, yes. Have you seen the smog in cities? Yes, it's because they have these government regulations. They have a government monopoly and who takes care of the environment. That's why it always goes Wait, to shit. Yeah. Anytime government that's gets involved in anything, the, the opposite oh, effect always occurs. No. Yes. That's been one of the main reasons that we actually have a much cleaner and safer workplace is because there's been push to get regulations both on on safety at work and then also on environmental regulations. They're, people don't do it out of the good of their heart. Right, because it's hard, for, for, for example, as a corporation, because they exist because of government, they can look at the cast analysis, and hey, it's a lot cheaper for us for just to pay a fine than to spend all this money in actually taking care of the land because we don't actually don't own the land, we rent it for the government, so there's no incentive for us to take care of it. Again, you point, it, the common denominator of all our social problems and ills is always the state. Just get rid of the state, you get rid of corporations. Just get rid of the corporations, you get rid of all, all this pollution problem. You get rid of all the corporations and then the state, the way of controlling our economy, we can have a freedom to trade. You don't have to be forced to use the dollar. You, can, you don't have to be forced to use the you, you, you don't have to. You can do it. You can trade in chickens if you want. It doesn't matter. You can do it in Bitcoin. The digital currency. Capitalism is a mode of production. What are, you can, you can live in the woods and play with animals. I don't give a fuck. As long as it's voluntary. As long as you're not violently forcing your ideas onto each other because what the government knows how to do. You can live the way, whatever. You can go live in the woods. It doesn't matter. Go twiddle your thumb and learn how to rebuild. Uh, you I don't know, want to live. I, I, I want to live in a city well, that's you, organized. Sorry, you're not civilized enough because obviously you don't know how to handle yourself interaction and code of conduct with other people because you have to use violence no, and steal from I'm them. Honest I'm, yes, that my honestly, life, you said without I'm, a law, you steal their bike. So honestly, you're telling me you're an honest crook. I'm that's saying, great to me. That's, I'm, that's, I'm saying honestly, both your and my retention of private property depends on violence. And if you think no, that you're doesn't. living your life in this country without the use of violence, you're, you're just... What are you talking about? I have no choice. They steal from my money and then they say they're, they're providing me services. I can't say I don't want you to steal my money and not provide me the service. You don't have a choice. Your, your method of accumulating goods yeah. Here we go, next, number 10 from uh, the Communist Manifesto. 
the... Yeah, it's true though. My method boat, I didn't use finest at all. I, I went to the guy, I wanted uh, a drink. I gave him uh, the Force Monopoly of Currency's Pussy. It's a dollar, we freely interacted. Uh, and I feel sorry for him that he has to spend so much money through the extortion schemes of regulations and licensing for him to be in the place where he is to provide me somewhat of a quality of product that perhaps could be cheaper for me. Perhaps it would allow him to employ more uh, more people to have actual jobs. And yeah, that would really suck for me after we go in there. Uh, yeah, that's that's the state. There's nothing violent in that interaction between me and I, only that I that I understand and I have some compassion for a lot of these people who are struggling. So we made, made all your because of the state. Uh, Coles did. I stopped by Coles. I stopped by people who traded stuff off at the uh, Diversity Thrift. I picked some stuff from there. Yeah. So you people. don't think you don't think that some of them came from sweatshops? Or some of them came from yeah, yeah. So, so there's people. The yeah, yeah. There's people like in Bolivia. I'm from Bolivia. There's a lot of people, a lot of factories there, where there's not a lot of jobs because of the government. So people really have to need some kind of job. So yes, this gave them an opportunity to make some some wealth so they could feed themselves and their family. Yeah. Please. Thank. Thanks. Thanks for the trust. Thanks for having uh, giving us some jobs. You know, you understand why a lot of those governments are, are run the way they do. Because that's all they know how. It's a three thousand year old religion, statism, government. They just keep repeating, repeating, repeating. And here you are as another prophet of the next government that you want to replace. Because the capitalist that runs the, the governments in the Western world. It's and tyrants. Europe it's people, is rulers. Funding. They're political rulers. They're yeah. the ones. And in where charge. do you think they get their money? A from lot you, of that. from you legitimizing it. From you saying you no, need a government, and they will say yes, thank you, uh, plebeian, for acknowledging us that you need a ruler because you're incompetent to rule yourself. Thank you. You just don't live in reality, though. You're the one living the fantasy. No, I'm pretty you, You're the one that living this utopian dream that after 3,000 years, you can still do it through government. It's never worked. It never will. I, I, I'm being honest with go. myself that my goods... That you need violence. Viol that's, no, that's, not that's that I need man. That they're procured through violence. So you violence need that violence. You, you need your corporations. That's that's all right, man. You need your corporations. Great. I've I don't never need once it. defended a corporation. You're defending government. Government. Well, as long as there's always a government, there's always going to be a corporation. So if you're defending the system, you're defending the same thing you're saying you're against. It makes you a hypocrite then. As long as you're advocating for government, there will always be corporations. There will always be these things that you're you're, you're advocating against. May I add something? Yes, please, please. Well, I think the system is just too powerful. Yeah. And. Uh, I mean, capitalism is just much stronger than energy, for instance. And there are many examples of how it didn't work well for the people. Well, not for the people, but there's always someone who would want to intervene and try to change something about the government. So, yeah. capitalism is the system that we live in, and there is no other way to escape it. Right. I mean, yeah. uh, and what's going to keep it from coming back? You by not by not encouraging people to engage in politics. Let, let's let yeah. go. But the thing is, we live in the world of consumption. We're told that we have to get more, like more is really... Yeah, yeah. Every organization right, on the right. planet likes to amass the most amount of resources while expending the least amount of energy. Right, right. So there is no way to escape the system. There is a way. Well, technically the system doesn't exist. There's no objective fact or evidence <laughs> that the government exists. The only thing that exists are individual people. You can't show me your friends or family or Americans or Russians without showing me individual people. Only individual people exist. And technically the state then is nothing but a small group of individual people who claim the authority to initiate violence onto everyone else. a lot of weapons. Have you, tried, have you tried going from country to country without a passport? Uh, yeah, that's right. You never need to before a government got involved. You had the freedom to travel. You're, you're, right. Yeah. Try it today. You, you, Try yeah, it today and tell me government, government doesn't exist. That's what I'm talking about. You had these agents. Right. They're thugs but you're, preventing but you, you from trying to escape the tax farm that you're forced that you were born into. Right. Yeah. That's what I'm talking. That's government. Right. They hire thugs to prevent you from leaving. Right. But you just said it doesn't exist. Yeah. Those the individuals Rachel. are preventing you. It exists. Rachel. That those guys in blue costumes are preventing you. Right. The so stranger. It's pretty no, real. No. No. Those, the, the, the people that they hire exist. Yeah, these people are still stuck in that matrix exists. Yes, those people are still plugging into dependency on this violence for their livelihood exists. Yes, those are the people who are preventing you. Right, so yeah. it's pretty real to The me individual that. people supporting that exist, yes. Yeah, they so call themselves a government, but there's a difference between an abstract contract and a concrete concept, right? Abstract concepts don't exist in the objective world, in the material world. Concrete concepts do, like the individual, right? If you can't show me a police officer again, your friends, your family, Americans, anarchists, without showing individual people. Only individual people exist objectively. There's no such thing as a force. Only individual trees. Right? So we can talk about this concept. That's very important. But the thing is government uses this to kind of prevent us from understanding the truth. They'll say that it's, you're, you're not allowed to steal, but you're okay with stealing. But they'll call it taxes. They'll just say it's wrong for you to murder, but they'll call it organized war. The thing with anarchy is that it could exist on a very small scale. Like for instance, there's an example in Richmond with the radio, 97.3. No, it's no, all 100% no. volunteer based. Right? Yeah. So people, they don't get paid, and there's no like manager or anything. It's yeah, all, yeah. it's all basically. 
competitive space, it's something that you're trying to achieve, right? Yeah, yeah. So it is possible on a like, very small scale, uh, small scale, but it's probably impossible on a large government scale. Well, well, uh, an example I was uh, mentioning earlier, it exists like on eBay. There's no violence on eBay, completely voluntary, right? This place hires over hundreds of thousands of people to be involved in there, and there's no violent interaction in there, right? So well, it, uh, once Greg, again, it's still a pretty small yeah. scale. It's and not, well, yeah, yeah, and this is where it's, it's got to have yeah. to start. Yeah, that's right. Where eBay is yeah. part of the government. It's part. It lives in the capitalist system, and it lives under this government. This guy again. All right, listen. eBay is not a corporation. I mean, I mean, it's not a government agency. It's not a government department. They might be a corporation, but they force businesses to incorporate to outcompete one another because they don't want to be the last one to fall behind. So government forces a lot of business to be involved in the rat race. Apple, for example, never wanted to get involved in the patent trade because of Apple. You can't make phones with round corners, but because other people were battling their technology, they were forced to get involved in that war. But do you know what it takes to build our phones? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah it takes a lot, like, like no, iPencil. It, it, yes, and it takes a lot of uh, stuff, like from, I don't remember the name of the, the material, but it's... Uh, yeah. Rare earth, heavy metal? Yeah, yeah, yes, yeah, a lot yes, of yes, stuff. Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if you think of some, for instance, poor African country like Sierra Leone or something, that's what it takes. I mean, there's literally blood on this phone Yeah. right now, so... Thing. iPhones, yeah, 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 yeah. and it is part of uh, what we live in, the world of consumption. I mean, you know what I'm saying? iPhone, you got like iPhone 4 or something? Uh, yeah, iPhone, iPhone 4. 4. Yeah. 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 But it's great because that means because there's no monopoly on creating phones. Hold on one second, there's no monopoly, this guy phone. doesn't know what he's talking about. There's no monopoly on trying to create a phone. I mean, and the way that they restrict the access oh, to the market, well, there is, but at the same time, because you have the freedom to compete. Uh, like in the first class of screen TVs that came out several years ago, they were bulkier and they cost a lot of money. Today you can find a better product of the same thing, but a much better version at a much cheaper price. Well, the thing is, we believe in democracy, so I would let this guy speak and express his opinion. He doesn't, he, 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 would, use, he would steal your bike. He admitted if uh, there was no monopoly on law. Well, still, he has an opinion. That he has not, an opinion. He's not civilized. He has no problem to using violence on other people. There are men with guns who can. Well, the thing is, I like to respect, that. but I don't have time to talk to you know, like secret sociopaths here who want to continue to use their <laughs> violence onto other people. And I gotta actually have to come out here and talk to other people. So hopefully one day you let go of the idea that violence will set us free. And you, if you want to talk more about it, we can continue. But I have to reach out to other actually real open-minded people who actually want to get to somewhere and not kind of repeating the same behavior in this cultural uh, culture of statism in the past thousands of years. Well, good luck. All right, man. Yeah, take good care, man. Everybody through word of mouth like working this. on it, working on it. Yeah, Keep working on it. Seven billion. Well, check us out. We're on uh, liberatorva.com. We have a lot of videos. Yeah, we're working on it. All right, man. Take good care. You and I already share these nonviolent solutions that we, we seek out in the park. Right, right. 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 So, what are your thoughts on that? <laughs> well, I agree to you. With you to a point. I think there is too much government control, too much government regulation in America as it is today. You know? Thing, that getting rid of the government is the solution. Well, what's the solution? Because again, they're funded through thefts. I mean, if you have a good idea, uh, you know, good ideas don't require force, right? You, you're not going to take out the gun at your friends and family and your neighbors, like, I have a great idea, give me your money. Um, you, you start a Kickstarter campaign, you do donations runs. Uh, but, 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 but the things that the government steals this money for is for a monopoly and services that they have that they don't allow freedom of competition in. Like, uh, the state has a monopoly on law. They have a monopoly on courts, on judges, on security, they have a monopoly even on first class mail. That you can't opt out, can't for payment, or have the freedom to compete and provide a service that's not going to be harmful and abusive to, to the consumers, right? And that's and that's even more of the hidden violence of that matrix, um, that they have a violent monopoly on the services. So we can still have roads, we can still have security, we can still have ways to help each other, to, uh, to take care of the poor, without stealing everyone's money uh, and handing it to the middleman, strangers, whereas she could do it yourself and most more efficiently and get to choose who's going to do it better, you know? Better quality of services. Because the state has a, uh, because anytime you have a monopoly on anything, the cost always rises. And the quality of those uh, services, because there's a monopoly, always lowers, right? Uh, you can look like the currency and the dollar in your pocket, because that's monopolized too. Before 1913, there used to be a lot of different kinds of money in this country. Banks had their own money, towns had their own money. And then the government in 1930 said, sorry, no one's allowed to compete with the US dollar. And if you try to, we're gonna throw you into a cage. 
So because of that monopoly, the, the, the value of the dollar lost over 97% of its value. All right, and that hurts the poor the worse. There's no incentive to save. It's going to just keep, keep depreciating over time. Um, there's a guy who tried to create his own currency called the Liberty Dollar a few years ago. IRS didn't like that. Seized his assets, threw him in a cage. See, so that's, that's, even, so that's the hidden violence, especially with government on, on the services that they try to tell us they provide, but they don't. There's a lot more violence that comes from that that's unseen. But how would you deal with the possible confusion of having more than one unit of currency in this country? Uh, yeah, you decide what's best for you. It's like uh, you have a selection of like different phones. Maybe you might not like this particular yeah. phone, but you'll go to Sprint, you go to AT. You're just like, well, that one costs too much. I may not afford an iPhone 5, but I could definitely afford an iPhone 2. Right? Because, uh, because when you don't have a monopoly, the, the, uh, the price of these things actually lowers and the quality improves. It's, it's the complete opposite. Right? So, like, have you heard of Bitcoin? All right, this is digital currency. This came out a few years ago. Uh, it's underground, of course, not a lot of people are going to know about it because the government doesn't want you to hear about it because they can't control it. They can't regulate it, they can't tax it. Uh, it's a peer to peer network. And uh, so it's digital currency. Reddit is starting to use it, WordPress is starting to use it. Um, I have an app now on my phone uh, so we can trade uh, digital currency outside of the state. So it exposes the violent monopoly the state has, but because this is digital, the state can't touch it. So at least it gives you an exploration of uh, ways that we can trade. I mean, money is another commodity, like a paperclip or a car, but it's the first commodity we're really allowed to trade, right? So even if you did want to try, you, you don't have the freedom to, to opt out or try something new or to create something better. But without the government who says what currency is valued. All right, all right, so the currency is not really valued in anything. It's lost over 97%. So because they keep printing so much of their own money to the Fed, that's what causes inflation, right? Uh, this guy who created the Liberty Dollar, that was actually backed by real assets, real precious metals. So that had real value to it. Um, now there's this digital currency because it has an interesting way to keep there at a, at a scarcity demand and adds real value in trading. It's worth more than the dollar now. So it's the people who kind of determine it. It's the market who people kind of look at the viableness and see this is good quality. I'm going to go into this and as other people get into it, there's, there's value in that. You know? Well, then what is your solution to, uh, I guess, those sort of people that would start a business that would try to cheat its customers right. like, without government regulation to, for lack of a better word, or a different word, regulate yeah. that business to protect its consumers, which maybe it's not doing a great job of right yeah, now. It never does, yeah. <laughs> but it's still intended to protect its consumers. Like right. how would you, I guess my question is how would you, what plan would you have to protect consumers right. without government there? Okay, uh, so it used to be before, uh, or like alcohol for example, uh, before prohibition, before the regulations and the licensing, government, all this uh, oversight, uh, people who created their own liquors branded it. They had personal liability for it because it was tied to their name, it was tied to, to the reputation. And so they would ensure that this is good quality product, this is good moonshine, you know, when they sold it. And they never had problems with that because people can directly trace it to the person and sue them, right? And I, I want to be in business. I don't, want, I don't want people to know that I'm, you know, doing this is low quality. I want to continue to have business and people relied on that. Uh, but now you have uh, regulatories, uh, commissions, all these different ways that prevents businesses from actually being honest. And so they found ways to kind of cheat, you know, through that system. You know, uh, corporations, for example, won't exist if there's no government. A oh, corporation is just a piece of paper that allows businesses to escape personal liability, right? So it leaves a lot more room for them to make a lot of more mistakes, and they're not the ones who lose any any of that, right? It's the employees by lowering their salaries. It's, it's us as the consumers by raising consumer prices. Uh, so without the government, you'll have stuff like like eBay. You know, there's no government regulation on eBay. There's no government or a criminal justice system, but they have a great dispute resolution organization. Right? They have a, uh, if you have a bad business, it doesn't arrive on time, the product doesn't match the description, people naturally just rate you down. So you're naturally socially ostracized, right? It's like, oh, you don't look like you have a good uh, reputation. Uh, but this guy here does, right? So you have the freedom to compete and freedom to, I mean, that's all you have in the end, it's your work. Right? So in a free and voluntary society without the state, would be, we'd be hold up to own work, right? If you like didn't honor one of your contracts, everybody would want to know because they'll say like, he's not a person who can honor his contract. So in a way, you really wouldn't need like a, a court in that sense. You just wouldn't be able to participate in the trade because no one would want to trade with someone who doesn't hold their agreements. You know, you'll just be socially ostracized. So that, that would be like a best form of self-defense against would-be aggressors or would-be fraud. 
Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so this philosophy is called anarchy. Uh, by definition, it means. Yeah. Okay. Cool. And it means. Yeah. Without rulers. Uh, like anon, like in science, anions and cations. Ans means without. Archy means rulers. So we can have rules. We can have a polycentric legal system. There's just no need for political rulers and their monopoly on law. Right? We can have communities of preferences. We can have, uh, you know, honest judges, honest courts, a, a freedom to compete, provide something of better reputation that's going to be more honorable. Right? So we can still have all this stuff. There's just no need to be forced into something on a monopoly that you can't even compete and provide something better. Cool. Well, let me give you a, a pamphlet. Another question. Yeah, man. <laughs> Under an anarchy, how would those who transgress against those rules you talked about, like someone who would murder someone else, yeah, or maybe someone who's not you know quite right in the head, like not everyone, not everyone really shares the moral beliefs of the majority, you know? Right. All right, all right, all right. So. You can, still be able, you can still have security. People who will protect you from the initiation of that force, right? You can still have security. I'm mean, just a guy in Detroit right now providing that to your neighborhood voluntarily because the cops, uh, it takes them like an hour to respond uh, because the unsustainability is collapsed now they're applying for bankruptcy. This guy provided real security there. And uh, the crime rates have dropped. You know, he's not throwing you to a cage for a victimless crime. Right, so this is a really cool example of how it can be provided. So in a community, you can have like, uh, like when you when you drive on the road, you're you're covered by this insurance, right? Uh, it gives you a good safety, knowledge, and well-being, and no one's going to drive recklessly, lest their premiums go up, or then no one's going to cover them and they can't drive, right? So the one idea out there is like we can all have insurance contracts against each other, right? If you were to aggress against somebody, your premiums will go up, and they'll say, look, let's go, let's go get some anger management classes. <laughs> Right. Uh, you, you're in a city. You know, civilization belongs to the civilized. You know, what are you doing? Uh, but you'll find a lot of the violence that comes through a lot of this stuff is because of loss of opportunity, a loss of options, and that's what it's brought by us by government, uh, especially with the currency. You know, it, no, no incentive to save. Depreciation value. The way they regulate businesses are for them to hire people who want to make an honest living. We, we wouldn't have a need to steal. Uh, you know, we are 75% poorer because of all the regulations in the past 60 years. Uh, like somebody who's making around fifty thousand dollars would be making three hundred thousand dollars today. There wasn't so much government forcing their way into businesses and voluntary interactions, um, like getting a piece of paper or permit to cut hair, right? Um, so yeah, you'll find a lot more solutions and opportunities outside of that, right? And for the most part, a majority of us don't really use violence, right? But we're just kind of tricked through government into supporting that. Only knows how to use violence to solve problems. So pretty much, I advocate just turning to our community and turning away from the government. Right? Uh, the organization I'm with is called Liberate RBA. It's a non-political organization, and this is pretty much uh, trying to go against not just state violence, but the violence between each other and the violence that's on the children, and trying to find uh, free market solutions outside of the matrix. Cool. All right. Well, my name is Cal. Mark. Mark, pleasure, man. Pleasure to meet nice you, Mark. To you too, man. And you said you had interest in political science. You're going to find a lot of good stuff on the back of the uh, Anarchy pamphlet. A lot of these resources that, for the most part, a lot of the political science teachers here do not want you to know about. Uh, especially like Rothbard. Uh, for, for, for example, they cherry pick a lot of the philosophers that support the idea of government. You'll never hear about the ones that don't. You'll never hear about Lysander Spooner, who like 100 years ago competed against the United States Postal Service because the government had a monopoly on that. But he said in the Constitution, it doesn't grant you an exclusive monopoly. So he competed and he outperformed them. It was efficient. It was effective. It was, he brought the prices down. And then uh, he went through a lot of court proceedings. He won a lot of them, but then the, gun, the, the political rulers just wrote a law. I said, all right, you're not allowed to compete. So people have tried, but you'll never hear about him in a political classroom. I mean, you should. You should. He started the American uh, Mail Letter Company. So I think you definitely will enjoy a lot of the information that I have. So I'm still learning a lot, of, a lot about these things. Cool, man. Yeah, man. Take good care, man. Me too. Me too. I don't know.